you're right, uh, Anjali. Um, aviation, along with uh, hospitality, entertainment, uh, all, all of us got the wrong end of the stick. Um, you know, for two months, there were, there were no revenues. Uh, for the, for uh, five days in March, all of April, and, and most of May. And uh, as, as you're probably uh, aware, aviation has a fairly high uh, fixed cost. And uh, uh, our fixed cost at Indigo was uh, about 40 crores a day, uh, you know, pre-COVID days. Um, and when you have absolutely no revenues coming in, you're, you're looking at an expense of in, in two months of about two and a half thousand crores. Uh, with absolutely no money coming in, so it it was indeed uh, you know difficult and and thankfully uh, late May we started flying again and and even now uh, we are only doing about thirty percent of our uh, production capacity. So uh, these are these are uh, certainly uh, uh, not easy days. But uh, at Indigo we believe uh, if uh, you know uh, just a few aviation companies uh, have to survive, we'll be one of them. Um, that said, from, from a communication standpoint for both uh, Rono, uh, Rono Datta, who's our CEO, and I, um, there are several uh, stakeholders, um, of which I think uh, two of them are uh, fairly important. Uh, one is uh, the board uh, and the various committees of the board, which also includes the promoters, and, and number two, the uh, employees. And uh, just so you know, our board is a very active board. Um, but it's a very management-run company. So we have the chairman of the board, who's a, a stellar uh, individual. Uh, we have a nine-member board, but the management pretty much uh, runs the company. But it is very important for Rono and I to communicate uh, with the board as much as we communicate with the employees, because at the end of the day, uh, shareholders uh, are, are uh, very keen to know uh, what are we doing uh, in these terms of uh, the pandemic. So um, um, for us, the communication with the board is, uh, is more or less factual. Uh, you're, you're talking about the realities of the aviation industry. Uh, you're talking about the reality of uh, where we are, how we are conserving cash, and uh, yet continuing to keep uh, employee engagement as, 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 as a predominant part of our communication. The second one is employees. And to communicate with employees is very, very important. Uh, much like Sudito said, um, we are not an industry that can work virtually. Um, imagine the pilot, uh, you know, says when you're all sitting in an airplane, uh, fantastic, have a great flight, I'm working virtually from home today. Uh, that's not something that's, that's ever going to happen. About 95% of my employees uh, don't have the luxury of working from uh, home. Uh, although uh, with only 30% uh, of uh, production capacity, uh, we need to communicate and not all of them are there. So for Rono and me, um, the communication with the employee is a combination of factual communi communication and what I call compassionate communication. And, uh, and, and facts are what? Facts are real facts. And, and our employees know as much as everybody else do that uh, you know, there are, these are trying times. And, uh, and, and, and Rono uh, is a fantastic communicator. And, and I think between the two of us, um, we, we, we continue to communicate in our own, in our own uh, you know, manner, which, which I think shows a couple of things. It shows our vulnerabilities as well. And it also shows our, our empathy and, of course, compassion. And when Rono wrote his email um, to employees and when he had his virtual town hall, he talked about how uh, his young grandson, who was a two-year-old uh, little boy in New York, uh, was having fever. And those days, those are the times when New York was very heavily hit by uh, COVID. And you won't imagine the amount of messages he got. Uh, in fact, a lot of people also asked. And to show that, that compassion is, uh, and, and, and also to show that he was as human as anyone else. And in this process, we did a bunch of things. You know, we did, uh, we announced pay cuts in the month of uh, March, but we kind of rolled it back in April because the government didn't want us to do it. And in the month of, Ma in the month of May, we, we did a pay cut and when things got worse, we also announced what we called a leave without pay program. And of course we did uh, uh, have a, a, a very uh, uh, a specific approach towards uh, performance and uh, communication around performance and all of that. It was very personalized, uh, as I said. 
Um, much like uh, what Priyanka was saying, um, we also have um, a program uh, where we seek uh, um, uh, employee pulse on a continuous basis. And I learned this when I was in my Amazon days, where we said it, there's no point just checking with employees once in a year. You need to do it uh, continuously. So our program is called Sixty Speaks, and Sixty is our uh, code, and you can also call it sexy or, or whichever way it works. And the intent is for us to ask uh, specific questions. And, uh, and we also have a, a NPS question, much like our customers uh, rate us on an NPS question, we have a employee NPS as well. So for the first time in January, we asked the employee NPS question and our NPS numbers were in the late 30s, 38, 39, which was considered uh, reasonably decent. And the second set of NPS question, uh, the, the, the second NPS question I asked was in the month of June and uh, our NPS numbers had gone up to mid seventies. This is in spite of the fact that we had pay cuts, we had leave without pay, we had performance programs and all of that. And I think to my mind, it's uh, probably a lot to do with how well we communicated. And we told employees, you are as much a part of the stakeholders of the company. You know, we need to be all in it uh, together and, and of course, you know, when, when the uh, airport operations began, there was a lot of skepticism. I mean, even today there is skepticism. Uh, customer behavior is going to determine how this industry is going to uh, come back in. And by customer behavior, I mean, is there uh, a, a willingness on my part to go do flights? Uh, like the way I used to do, so communicating with customers was also important. So we now talk about the HEPA filters in our airplanes, which continuously brings in fresh air. And, and we basically tell customers as much as our employees that if at all you need to uh, be worried, it's the last place we want you to be worried about your health is in the airplane. So for the, for the employees, we, we basically didn't stop with just sermonizing and compassion doesn't mean you just sermonize, but also facts. And, and of course we did uh, our bit in terms of PPE uh, kits. And, and if you see some of our uh, 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 cabin staff, they all look like astronauts and, uh, and, and, they, and they need to just throw it away. And, and this is hot times of the year. Like you're in, you're in cold, you know, uh, environment inside the plane and the moment you come out, it's, it's really warm. And, uh, and, our, and our people are carrying on with it very, very well. And, and, and I think it's, it's a lot to do with, uh, you, know, um, you know, humane uh, communication, uh, which is coupled with facts because you don't want to be hiding and saying everything is hunky-dory when it, when it really is not. I think it's a combination of all of these. Um, I think uh, before, I, uh, before you try to understand uh, this silver lining and what you do with it, I think firstly, uh, it's an opportunity. I think it's an opportunity to adapt, uh, to experiment, uh, to embrace a new world, uh, the way passengers uh, will, will fly, the, uh, the way um, you know, we will deal with uh, passengers uh, and all of that. A everything is everything is changing, um, and I think it's it's a it's a great new opportunity. Those that can embrace the opportunity by way of experimenting, adapting, uh, will will be the winners in this new world. Um, from an employee standpoint, I think uh, um, I think Anjali talked about it: uh, mental health and wellness, in addition to physical and uh, financial wellness, is very very important and uh, you know how you deal with it and i think it's going to be probably one of the biggest challenges hr function will will face in going forward i mean how do we really help and uh, and I, I forgot the phrase uh, anjali used and i'll probably ask her again later um, i think this means that there are adjustments that a lot of people need to make it starts with uh, the shareholders uh, and the board the management needs to make adjustments uh, employees uh, need to make adjustments and all of that I think there's one more thing that will come with the new world is uh, what, I, uh, what I call Uberization of employment. Um, I think people are not going to be all that uh, uh, comfortable just being an HR leader all their life. In fact, uh, one of my mentees uh, asked me, you know, Raj, you've done this for 30 years. I don't even know whether I'll be employed for 30 years, but I like to sing, I like to paint, I like to, uh, I like to dance, I also like HR. Uh, which one should I do? Can I do all the four? And I said, oh, maybe you can, you can try that. And that's probably going to happen. You know, uh, I know a lot of colleagues, not a lot, at least a few colleagues that actually sing in a bar in the, in the weekends. And, and these are senior people. These are not uh, people that are just looking for uh, additional uh, money in their, in their pocket. So I think that's going to be uh, very important. 
another one in the new world, uh, Anurag, is uh, going to be how HR leaders and business leaders will react to stuff that's coming in social media. Um, you know, people are going to take up to the social media, especially when they feel aggrieved, uh, when they think they don't want to go face uh, with, um, uh, with a straight face for whatever reason. Now, I think to me, um, how fair can I be uh, and how honest investigations can I do uh, for, for these kind of things will be very, very key because it's easy to get upset about it. It's easy to get upset and say, you know, why are you writing about this? But there's, there's probably some truth in it. I think all of this, to me, form the new world. For me personally, uh, this is the longest I've been at home, Anurag. Um, you know, four months, my wife and son are tired of me. Um, <laughs> I never thought, uh, you know, I, I'm a weekend uh, father and a husband. I work in Delhi. Uh, my family stays in uh, Chennai. Uh, so so that I never thought I'd be at home for four months. Even my last uh, job in Amazon, the last two years I was based in Beijing. And uh, so personally, this was one. And then I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing 12,000 steps a day consistently since March 25th. I haven't missed a day. And, uh, you know, my son thinks I've gone mad. I, I keep running all the time. So these two. <laughs>